Welcome to King's, one of the oldest and largest colleges of the University of London. It's also the place where DNA was discovered. Today we're here to talk about motor neurone disease, MND, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, which are all terms used to describe the same thing, a devastating diagnosis when given to families. Here at King's, where I'm Professor of Neurology and Complex Disease Genetics, we both care for people living with motor neurone disease and also undertake a wide range of research, trying to find the causes and trying to find a cure. A lot of what we do is funded by the Motor Neurone Disease Association. So come inside and see what we're up to. And thank you to all of you for raising awareness and making this possible. So this is my office, and I'm still very much a hands-on clinician. I'm the director of the King's Motor Neurone Disease Care and Research Center. And every Thursday, we run a multidisciplinary team motor neurone disease clinic. When we see people there, they may have had problems for months or even years, and may have known something is wrong and Googled it. They may not, on the other hand, have any idea that the diagnosis could be motor neurone disease. In either situation, my job is to break the devastating news as gently as possible. So after explaining what a motor neuron is, in basic terms, they're the cells in our nervous system that help us to move muscles, which are always voluntary in the case of motor neuron disease, and help us to swallow and breathe. I then have to answer the question, which most people ask, why me? We know it's very complicated, but we also know it's not a single factor that causes motor neuron disease in any one person. Instead, it's a combination of genetics, environment, age, and chance that all work together to tip the balance to determine if someone gets motor neuron disease or not. Since 1994, I've been looking at what might cause motor neuron disease, and particularly the genetic risk factors. With colleagues around the world, we've now discovered more than 25 genes that seem to increase a person's risk, and there's another 100 that might be implicated. The number of genes we're discovering is doubling every four years. Genetics is all about number crunching nowadays. Typically, we have to use a supercomputer, which may take three or four months to do a simple analysis. One person's genome takes up an entire one terabyte hard drive, and we're about to analyze 22 and a half thousand people's genomes. So this is what DNA looks like, and you've got a meter of this in every single cell of your body. Microscopic changes in DNA are called mutations and can lead to disease. We're part of a massive multinational collaboration called Project Mine, which in the UK is fully funded by the Motor Neurone Disease Association. The aim of Project Mine is to find which mutations might cause motor neurone disease. I'm often asked, why should we do genetic research in motor neurone disease? And the answer is that like most conditions, motor neurone disease is caused by a combination of genetic and environmental risk factors. By understanding which genetic risk factors cause it, we can understand how the disease works and we can design a therapy that's rationally based and that might actually be effective. In this building, there is an army of researchers trying to find the causes of motor neurone disease and trying to find a cure. And that army is replicated across the UK, Europe and internationally. The only way we can make progress is because of the contribution from people with motor neurone disease, their families, carers and the Motor Neurone Disease Association. So thank you.